Hey everybody, it's Ryan from The Art of Paying Attention, and I wanted to shoot a little video. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've shot a video, and I had something on my mind that I wanted to share with you because The Art of Paying Attention is our endless and proper work, as Mary Oliver would say. And I was thinking about something that has to do with paying attention, what I'm paying attention to, and one of those things is going analog, is we are so tethered to our phones as I'm holding a phone to my face, shooting this video. Social media, the internet, a lot of us have jobs where we're on computers all day staring at screens. We come home, we stare at more screens, screen, screen, screens, digital, tethered to the digital, the digits, the digits, is that a word? No, it's not a word. But just constantly getting this feedback from digital mediums, constant stimulation. And I want to give you a little tour of my home office because there's a lot of little habits and little practices that I do to kind of untether from the digital because I'm not against the digital, I'm not against computers or TV or any of those things. They can be useful at times. But what happens when we get addicted to those things? What happens when they become our all in all? What happens when we never learn how to break away from these things? And time will tell. Uh, what social media is doing to our brains and to our kids and, and all that. Um, but a couple of things I wanted to show you is, in, and I may be a dinosaur, I'm a middle-aged man in my 40s, and so some of you may not even know what some of these things are. Um, but I have a, a little gift here. Um, yes, my friends, that is a Hermes 3000, made in the 60s, beautiful green color, and it is fully functional. I don't have paper in it right now, but I had it refurbished. It's a typewriter. When I started writing at the age of eight, it was on a typewriter, actually an electric typewriter. That is not electric, that is totally analog. And there's something beautiful about the feedback of a typewriter. My kids have played with this thing and think just have no category for it, but it's just you and the typewriter. And I wanna show you one other thing. I don't know if you can see the Isaac Asimov book. It's actually a biography about him. He was a science fiction writer, 60s and 70s and 80s. And he used to type on this guy, not this exact one, but on a typewriter. And he produced hundreds of sci-fi novels. And I find that fascinating because we always think, well, we're digital now. We're, we're all about tech. We have computers. We have delete buttons. We have all that stuff. But what was it that he was able to type out that many pages on an analog machine. And to my point is, it doesn't make it superior. It doesn't make it better. Isaac Asimov produced hundreds and hundreds of books on a typewriter. And it's interesting because today we don't even have that many people that are that prolific writers that write that kind of, make that much content with an analog machine. It's all digital now and yet, it doesn't mean we're producing more. It doesn't mean it's superior. Think of all the bands in the 60s and the 70s. They were so prolific. Think of the Beatles. Think of the Doors. Think of Creedence Clearwater Revival, a lot of my favorite bands from the classic rock era. They, they made, the Doors I think had five or six, maybe seven albums in five years, all on analog machines. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have computers. They didn't have overdubbing. They didn't have auto-tuning, yet it was all done digital. There's instant feedback when things are analog. And one of the, my favorite, analog things, as you might imagine, if you know me. And one of my other new favorite hobbies, a little early morning pipe. This is pipe tobacco. A fun hobby, a couple little bowls in the pipe, great smell, great little Peterson, some Burleaf, some Virginia Flakes, fantastic. Something about pipe smoking that is slow, that is meditative, that keeps you grounded, it takes time, it takes energy. You can't rush a pipe, you can't hurry it, it forces you to stop, pause, think about your life, think about your situation. That's where I find a lot of time to pray and think and reflect and read and slow myself down because I know that I am not by nature someone who wants to sit around and do nothing. I want to keep going and keep going and keep pushing and keep pushing and sometimes digital technology gives us the, the myth or the idea that faster is better. And so when I think about paying attention, the art of paying attention is what are the habits, what are the practices that we can put in our lives 
that are tactile, that slow us down, that force us to pay attention. And I, I think of when I even think about reading, instead of digital books, reading print books, but also one of the things I love too and when it comes to reading is poetry because poetry forces you to observe, to think, to go line by line, word by word. Every word is, is placed in a specific way as they observe the world around them and, and try to say it in new and fresh ways. So there's all these gifts around us. There's pipes, there's books, there's poetry. I even listen to vinyl records. And it's not just because I'm an old guy. Maybe it's nostalgia. Maybe it's trying to live in the past. But what I realize is that I do get sucked into what is easy, what is sufficient, what is fast. Looking for that dopamine hit, looking for that instant feedback. But I want to challenge you and encourage you because I'm doing the same thing to myself is, is what are the, th the things I can put into my life that slows me down, that puts my feet on, on the grass, puts my eyes in the trees, that puts a few tobacco leaves in a pipe to, to slow down, to think, to reflect on my life, to pray, to be still. And it's really difficult, but I think we need those breaks. I think we need those fast. And so that's what I'm paying attention to these days is digital versus analog. The pros, the cons, how I can slow down, how I can be more present to my wife and kids and God and the earth and the good creation around me. It's not easy, believe me, because I love me some screen time. Grace and peace, my friends.